Well, hello, Celebration family. Once again, we gather together around God's Word. Well, as you know, we have been talking about being repurposed, and we've come to the conclusion of our series, Redirect Your Passion. And certainly, by now, we ought to understand how God has desired to repurpose us, to use us to advance the kingdom of God, that we might be agents of the Spirit of God to fulfill the Great Commission. That is, to go into all the world and preach the gospel. I am amazed at a recent statistic that I heard which said 70% of Christians are not aware of what the Great Commission is. Boy, that's a high percentage. A lot of people who don't know uh, what the Great Commission is. You and I have been called to go into the world to bring the message of Christ, to share our witness and our story of Christ and how he has transformed our life, how he came into the world to save us, to deliver us, to set us free from our sins, to restore all that Satan has robbed us of. And so that is what the story of the resurrection of Jesus Christ is really all about. Because of his victory at the cross, we have now uh, been restored in our relationship and communion with God so that we would be able to experience the power of God at work in our lives. And so I would like to take a look here in Luke 22, uh, verses 1 through 5, as it says, Now the feast of the unleavened bread, which is called the Passover, was approaching. The chief priests and the scribes were seeking how they might put Jesus to death for they were afraid of the people. And Satan entered into Judas, who was called Iscariot, belonging to the number of the 12. I would like to pause here for just a moment and just point out that Judas was walking with the 12. He experienced everything that the disciples experienced. Even last week, we talked about all of the miracles of Jesus and what Jesus was able to do and accomplish and the fact that Judas was there. You see, you can be in the midst of Jesus. You can actually have a knowledge of Jesus. You can actually believe in Jesus and yet you can still have Satan enter into your heart. You can still not be born again. You can still not be born of God, of the Spirit of God and Satan can actually enter into you and continue to use you as a tool of the enemy, of one who is working against the kingdom of God. The awesome thing about this is that God has already factored these things into place. And because God knows all of this, he has already devised a plan and a purpose for you and I that will enable us to be victorious in the end. All we need to do is believe. We must genuinely believe. And that ultimately is the question. Do you really believe? Do you really believe in Jesus enough to surrender your life, your heart, allow the word of God to renew your mind that you might operate in his power and his strength, drawing from the resources of the kingdom of God to live a life that has been endued with power from God? in order to be his witnesses as we go into all the world to preach the gospel, to represent the kingdom of God and of heaven. I pray that you are experiencing this in your life. Verse four, it goes on and it says, and he went away and discussed with the chief priests and officers how he might betray Jesus to them. And they were glad and agreed to give him money. Now, at first it may seem as if uh, Judas was doing this betraying act for the purpose of, uh, of financial gain. But that is not really what is going on here. The fact is he is a tool of Satan. Satan is using him. Satan has filled his heart. Satan has hold of his mind. This is why Romans says we must be transformed by the renewing of our mind because our mind is really uh, operating 
contrary to the will of God. Our brain is running a program that is contradictory to the will of God, the ways of God. And because our ways and God's ways are as far as the east is from the west, we need our minds to be renewed. And this is what the Word of God does. This is what Jesus came to do. In fact, uh, here in Matthew 26, 15, it says uh, that uh, Jesus said, "What?" Uh, I'm sorry, Judas said, oh, what are you willing to give me to betray him to you? And they weighed out 30 pieces of silver to him. And so even though Judas uh, was asking the generic question, what are you willing to give me to betray him? They said, we'll give you 30 pieces of silver. But this is not, as I said, the motivation behind what Jesus is doing. The fact that Satan has entered him is the real reason. And he goes on and it says, from then on, Judas began looking for a good opportunity to betray Jesus. Now his motives and his ways, he is under this, this satanic inspiration uh, to go against Jesus. So many people are working against Jesus and they don't even realize it. They think they're doing the right thing or a good thing. Judas was probably thinking that he was doing the right thing, trying to push Jesus in the direction of fighting for the kingdom that he represented, going against uh, the enemies of the zealots. And this is not exactly what the plan of God is. And so often we think we understand and know the plan of God and we have a way that seems right, but ultimately in the end, it is the way of death or the way that leads to destruction. And this is why it's important to be led by the Spirit of God, filled with the Spirit of God, to operate under the anointing of God so that you might be able to accomplish the will of God. Well, the great news is that God has factored in all of the parameters regarding uh, what it's going to take in order for His will to be accomplished. It's true in your life, in my life. It's true in the world and all that is happening around us. And we don't have to be fearful or afraid. We don't have to, to worry ourselves about all the details of these things. All we need to do is believe in God. Place our faith and trust in Jesus. Know that God is fulfilling his plan and he is working out his will in the world all around us. And for that reason, we can rejoice. We can be glad. We can look to God and celebrate and give thanks for all that he has done and is doing in our lives. We can be effective at accomplishing the will of God. And so here in verse 17, it says, now on the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? And he says, go into the city to a certain man and say to him, the teacher says, my time is near. I am to keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. The question is, is your house ready to receive the master, the teacher? Are you able to, to experience God? Is he welcome at your house? This is a very interesting passage here because it's very similar to what Jesus said to the two disciples that he sent to retrieve the donkey and its cult. It's so important to see how they were all willing to do what Jesus commanded them to do. And here again, Jesus is sending them in using very similar language. And he is saying to tell the, a certain man, a specific man, uh, it's someone who, who, who God had already touched his heart. God had already moved upon this man so that when he heard the words of Jesus, that he would be able to respond in order to see the will of God accomplished. You and I will have encounters with various people throughout our lives as we go through our daily routine. And the people that we will encounter uh, will probably be people that God has orchestrated into our lives so that we might have an impact on their lives. And I believe that many of the people that you would uh, uh, have an uh, uh, an an encounter with 
uh, are, are there so that they might hear the gospel. They might experience God. So as you go into the world, as you impact people, uh, there are people that are what I would call certain men, certain women people that God has prepared the hearts of so that they would be able to receive or hear the words of God that you would share or speak into their lives. Verse 19 says the disciples uh, did as Jesus had directed them and they prepared the Passover. Uh, this is critical in fulfilling the word of God. You and I both must learn how to do as Jesus directs us. Fulfill the word of God, follow the word of God. So that as verse 20 says, when evening came, Jesus was reclining at the table with the 12 disciples. And guess who was there? Yes, Judas was there. It says, as they were eating, he said, truly, I say to you, one of you will betray me. And of course, the disciples all take pause. And I tell you, that would cause me to stop eating. And it says in verse 22, it says, it says, being deeply grieved, they each one began to say to him, surely not I, Lord, or some translations say, Lord, is it I? Lord, will it be me? And the ultimate question is, will you betray Jesus? Will I be the one who betrays Jesus? We all come short of the glory of God. We all have the ability to, to uh, misrepresent God or to do the wrong thing and cause people to have an, a negative view or perspective of Christ and of God. And the disciples understood this and they said to Jesus, surely not I, Lord. Oh, Lord, please, not, not me. Is it, is it me? And they were asking this question. It was a question they were asking. And then it goes on in verse 20, 23, and he says, uh, he answers them and he says, he who dips his hand with me in the bowl is the one who will betray me. And the son of man is going to go just as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the son of man is betrayed. It would have been good for that man if he had not been born. And so we know the importance of this very act, this very hour, the son of per perdition. This is a situation that none of us would want to find ourselves in. Verse 25 says, Judas, who is betraying him, says, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. Jesus said to him, You have said it yourself. And so Jesus is identifying the betrayer, or the one who would betray him. He is, he is trying to blend in with everyone else and give the appearance that his heart is in alignment with everyone else's, but his heart is not the same. His heart is filled with Satan. Satan has entered his heart. Satan has entered his life. And you and I can easily be deceived by people who give the appearance that they are following God, that they love the Lord, but ultimately their hearts are not of God. They have been entered into by Satan. I would say they have a religious spirit, a spirit that is contrary to the will of God. And so you and I must be able to hold on to the truths of God despite those who are working against God and are who are living a way that is contrary to God, doing things that are going against the will of God. But God has a plan even in these situations and circumstances. He has already factored these things in. It says in verse 66 of John 6, as a result of this, many of his disciples withdrew and were not walking with him anymore. So Jesus said to the 12, you do not want to go away also, do you? And of course they were asking this question because Jesus was talking about following him, living uh, your life in alignment with him and his word. He was talking about eating the bread and he was relating uh, his life to uh, the bread and the bread of course, we know from communion represents the life of Christ. It represents the suffering and all that he endured. Are you willing to live your life, a life of suffering, enduring what uh, the opposition that is coming your way as a believer, as a child of God? Only those who are willing, only those who believe will be able to endure these things. 
And so uh, you and I are, are expected to follow Christ. Verse 68 says, Simon Peter answered him and said, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. And Jesus answered them and said, did I myself not choose you, the 12, and yet one of you is a devil? Saints of God, it's more than just believing. It is following God. It is about doing the will of God. It is about knowing him in the pardon of your sins, your life surrendered, your life yielded, that the glory of God would take up residence within you, that you would be fulfilling the will of God say to God, God wants to use you. The question is, do you really believe? Do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? Do you believe that he has a plan of redemption that is able to deliver you from evil and enable you to overcome every obstacle that comes your way? Even those who appear to be with you may not necessarily be. They may actually be working against you. But nonetheless, God has already factored these things in. You and I must live a life, a life that is broken, a life that is yielded and surrendered to God, a life that is willing to accomplish and do all that Jesus says to accomplish and to do, persevering in the will and the plan of God. I pray that you believe today. I pray that you know and understand how God is able to do abundantly more than you could ever ask or imagine, that if you direct your, redirect your passion, you will be repurposed and you will see the manifestations of God in Jesus' name.